driving art, driving art, too far and cheap. She no speed and wind in my eyes. It don't even know how to find when it gets you. Collapse your name and look, don't be surprised. So many months too long since I met you. Don't even know how to say when it gets you. Suddenly now, you know you're rapping long. It's many hundred miles and it won't be long. What will I do if there's someone there with you? But if it's someone you've always known, how do we know I can come and get to you? The way the warning and find you, Lord. So many miles too long to I met you. Don't even know you said when I get to you suddenly. Down the sirens warning me. And round and round he got me spinning. See the beat of my own drum, drum, bum, bum, bum. So try to be more kind. Take a bit of time to figure out the fine lines, and I'm just kicking dirt to see what I'm worth. So try to be more kind, and I won't fall behind. I'm kissing the Sound of sirens warning me. And round and round he got me spinning. 
Thanks, guys. Everything sound okay? Great. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Jerry X. Uh, I am a songwriter from St. Pete. JT is one of uh, one of my uh, good friends. I like to think of him as like my annoying little brother. He's still my jam, though. I love him very hard. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having me and paying attention. And it's really nice to, to be able to play a room where uh, everyone actually came up to watch music and listen, right? Because uh, we all have to play three hour gigs at restaurants every once in a while to pay our mortgage. I bought a house. I'm like a full grown, I'm a full blown adult at this point. I realize that. Uh, absolutely. It fucking, it fucking sucks, yes. But. Uh, also, I don't have a, like an understanding landlord, you know, it's a, the bank, so I can't be late. I can't be like, hey, is it okay if I'm a couple of days late? Nope. Just mortgage. That's a whole cup of whiskey right here. That's all, that's all whiskey with like a splash of ginger ale. Cheers. Life sucks. It's great to be here, though. Thank you, guys. So uh, this next song is, is a new song um, I wrote with. I attend this music festival and songwriting festival in Wisconsin. I've attended it for 12 years. Um, and the organizer of the festival um, had cancer, which is the biggest conundrum of the entire shit is the fact that Pat actually survived. He's 65 years old, soaking wet, maybe weighs like 95 pounds when he's healthy. And he had like stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and bone marrow cancer, and he kicked butt, right? So he survived, but uh, I wrote the song with a few other songwriters up there uh, when we actually, we were absolutely sure that he wouldn't make it. Stand with 
Thank you. steady beat and threw my body in the air as quickly as the heat began to burn my knees I am a hunter and work is so I cleared my sore throat and began to sing a true line in the dark with the shuffling my tired feet I am the hunter and work is the I wrote that song uh, as a result of uh, being hired by the Oreo cookie company. <laughs> True story, though. Uh, they wanted me to do a cover of a Cole Porter song, right? And I did it exactly how they wanted it. And then for the next five days, they made me do 17 different genre versions of that song. So you know what Cole Porter sounds like. It's great, right? Like kind of jazzy, a little like ragtimey. Then they wanted like a hip hop version and like rock ballad version. And so at, at the very end, I was so upset that I was like, this is bullshit. Like, I hate this. Like, I don't want to do this. And, and yeah, and my best friend at the time told me like, Jerry, just finish that, just finish that last version and send it in because you're going to be upset if you don't, you know, follow through with it. I'm like, dude, like, work is a fucking wolf. And I feel like a hunter. And then that's how, you know, I'm the hunter and work is the wolf came about. <laughs> At Starbucks, bitching about sending a hip hop version of a Cole Porter, you do something to me. Yeah, I know. 
Polaris. I have that record for sale, by the way. It's called Whiskins. I mean, I work as well. I also have Whiskin cigarettes, too. I have a, a few records with me. Um, this next song, I wrote when I really got to pee. <laughs> yeah. So I was born in Bulgaria and uh, raised in Bulgaria and France for most of my life. And I uh, came here with my mom and my sister in October of 2000. And uh, I went back, I mean, I've been touring, right? Like you know, uh, internationally. So I, the, for the European version of the tour, like we're, we're actually in Paris, my mom and my sister decided to come with me. And my mom had the brilliant idea of shoving all three of us in a hotel room together, even though we haven't lived together at this point, like for probably close to like five years. And there was one bathroom and uh, I had to pee and my sister was in the bathroom and I put my ear to the door of the bathroom and I heard my sister yelling at herself in a mirror. And uh, my sister is the scariest person I've ever met in my entire life. She is so intelligent and so beautiful and stoic and uh, terrifying. She will send you into existential crisis with one sentence. So, uh, and kind of blue blood. So I always thought that I was a self-deprecating baby of the family. I've written 15 fucking records about how much I hate my life, right? So hearing her kind of yelling at herself in the mirror kind of gave me the perspective of even your heroes have flaws. So that's a, the song is called I'm Broke. sister in the mirror say she's tired of herself and I can't count how many times I've woken up to that I don't even recognize who I'm looking at I don't even recognize who I'm looking at not just kidding. There's a girl I know who always walks with her eyes to the ground. People say she fakes her sadness so she doesn't seem so proud. But I know how an audience waits for you to fail. Yeah, I know that feeling all too well. Yeah, I know. don't know how long I'm supposed to play. <laughs> More! That's what she said. As my mom says, if she said so. <laughs> my mom, this true story again, Christmas Eve, five years ago, 
my sister and I kept throwing the that's what she said joke around like the Christmas table. And my mom kept laughing, but she was laughing nervously because she actually didn't understand what was happening. She was just laughing because everyone else was laughing at the table. And she just could, she goes like, no, explain it to me. I'm like, mom, it's cool. You don't have to be perverted. Like it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a perverted joke like that marina and i are off like we're just bad children like we're just yeah it's like almost 30 and i'm throwing a, like around that's what she said joke and my mom goes like no just explain to me i'm like all right that was really hard that's what she said oh it was <laughs> it was uh really long and hard or i'm really sweaty or uh i'm glad i came here you know <laughs> and so so my mom and then they kept saying that's what she said and then uh Fast forward to like four days later, she's like, how was your gig? I was, I don't even remember I was playing, but she just texted me, she's like, how was your show? How was your gig? I'm like, uh, it, was, it was like really hot and like really hard, but you know, I got through it. And she goes, if she said so. <laughs> it's like. Can't remember the actual punchline, but you got it though. You actually understand where to use it, but if she said so. Is her it, that's her jam? Now she says like if she says so, but she she says it like this like someone will say like oh my god you know my back hurts like oh, it's so hard and she go if she said so like she freaks out and she says it like really loud. Imagine me, twenty years older, and about fifteen inches shorter. No, she's not that short, but she's pretty short. My sister and I, uh, from the moment that we actually outgrew her. Whenever she would yell at us, I would just walk up. This is what my mom said. I would just go, if she's screaming at me, you go, shh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not going to let you go until you just calm down. And then she'd just be like, Jerry, let me go. And I'm like, shh, just, just calm down. And I'm going to let you go. And whenever you calm down, I'm going to let you go. So, Jerry, I'm being real serious. I'm like, shh, it's okay. <laughs> my sister and I have, uh, have effectively hugged my mom's head to calm her down for since like 2004. Because we're taller than her. She's a midget, sort of. Oh, that's actually great. Uh, Dewey Cox, yeah. yeah if you, have any, any of you guys like seen uh, Walk Hard? The Dewey Cox story? God damn it, really? Oh, well, this actually might be kind of funny, but it's not. I didn't write this. So it's inappropriate, but they're not my words. Hello? <laughs> Oh shit, okay, I'm gonna do it. All right, fuck it. Let me hold you, magic man. Pretend I were flying in space. Let me hold you, magic man. So the dog will stop licking your face. All the elevator buttons. We're so incredibly high. I stand here for the midget man in the size of a regular guy. So let me hold you, midget man. We'll make believe you can fly. Bump it up. And some are just small. I didn't write it. Also, I rocked out so hard that I broke a string, which never happens. Hey, JT, are you in the room? Can I use your guitar? I, I. Oh, do you want to come up and sing? Well, I'm going to use your guitar, and you can also sing. I was actually, in the interview that we were doing in the green room, I said that the only time that I ever change strings is when one breaks and I just change that specific string. We were I was actually saying, like, how do musicians, afford, like, a, a lot of guitarists that we know change their strings right before a gig. I don't have $10 per gig <laughs> to, like, spend on fucking strings and change them. Like, when one breaks, it breaks, and I change that one. 
with an electric guitar string because the only guitar strings I have are actually electric guitar strings. So that's going to happen later. Thank y'all. Where are your shoes? <laughs> Where are your shoes? Did, oh, they're over there. I was saying, did you? Get a job, you fucking hippie. I love you. No, just let me break everything. <laughs> just, l just let it happen, man. <laughs> just What's that? Three? You want to do a uh, civil war? Uh, yeah. I'll, get stay, I'll stay off the mic a little bit. I know mine's probably louder, so just keep keep it where it's at, and I'll stay off. <laughs> also, that is bitey. The moment that I start singing, he's like, ha ah, ah. Can you guys see this? Uh, can you guys see this bump on the ridge of my nose? And it go like this, right here. So, yep, there it is. <laughs> I found it when I went to the bathroom, and everyone was saying, "Like you can't see it." And I went to the bathroom, and it's like just white and red around it. I was fanning my face with a, a drum head in the green room because it was really hot. Because they turned off the AC when they were doing the interview, and it was really, really hot, and I was vigorously fanning my face with both hands and then I looked to the side because I got distracted and when I looked to the side I smashed the metal rim of the drum head directly onto the ridge of my nose. Who needs a nose job, right? Just smash your face into something. I'm gonna keep it there. Okay. I'm so sorry. I am, uh, I write really sad songs and uh, my shows tend to be sort of like a bipolar experience. I crack, I will make you cry with a song and then I'll, I'll try and make you laugh in between by being stupid and then sing something sad and then be dumb and then sing something sad and be dumb again, so. Also, I don't like talking between songs. This is my actual speaking voice. Hello? It's my actual voice. I don't understand it either. Seriously. Um, JT and I are going to play a cover.
love you. Put on your shoes. No, you don't have to. Just, I don't. I don't know. You don't have to. I don't know. I kind of. Now it's going to be even weirder because those are like foot thongs. That's a foot thong. My drummer um, said that they they were dad sandals. I don't know what the fuck that means. I know, but you guys weren't here earlier. He showed up in, in short shorts. Short, 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 short shorts. Where are you going? I thought you were going to sing for the next one. That's right, turn around. so hard. <laughs> Let me take my let me slip, slip it off. <laughs> so uh, I don't do very many covers, but this is one of the covers that I learned uh, about like a month and a half or two ago. It took me legit 16 years to muster up the courage to learn this cover. I, I'm very selective with the covers that I play because I have too much respect for the song and like the musicians and I never want to do like a really sh shit job at, you know, I don't want to ruin it for myself by hearing myself doing a crap job at it, so. With that said, hopefully I will not ruin this. This is a Tears for Fear song. We got a low hum coming through her wedge.
watching your world my world good up for him he's amazing uh, we were supposed to practice ne the song we're gonna play. I'm gonna sing with him for the next set, like three and a half weeks ago. And within like the last four days, I kept asking him to text me the song, and he didn't until last night at like I think two o'clock in the morning or something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, it, and she's like, "Oh, we got it. Like we're just, you know, whatever. We're just sitting in the green room. Like we'll figure it out." He has really pretty feet for a man. I hate feet. He's got gorgeous feet. If she said so. Where is my mom? My mom's really watching right now on Facebook Live. Hi, mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, this is being streamed, by the way. So, y'all are out in the world. Did you say all the cuss words that you know in order? Two minutes ago, <laughs> so we, can, we can keep going. Two minutes ago? Oh, ooh, we're getting some major hummus up here. Yep. Yep. You have like a better uh, boom boom than I do. Um, I'm gonna play one more. Play with me, and then I'm do, done. Yeah, let's do let's do two more. Yep. Don't tell me what to do. Sorry. <laughs> I'm my own boss, man. Yeah. All right. Um, I promised that I was gonna play Paper Tongue. Uh, I haven't played this song acoustically, I think, since I had to actually record the guitar part for the actual song on the record. So it might, it might be shit. It might be great. Good luck. <laughs> sooner. I went, I went like this and it wasn't there. I am not aware of my surroundings whatsoever, ever. This isn't even like a special occasion of me being this clumsy. This is just my actual life. It's awful. Watch out for those butt pirates. <laughs> Protect your butthole. <laughs> if she said so. <laughs> Hi, Mom. I'm sorry. I guarantee you she's actually at home right now watching this shit. Oh, it's in flux. Well, tune in by ear. Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> Shivery is absolutely dead, one thousand percent. And your butthole. Not that one. It's the other one. It's not that one. It's the other one. There you go. That's the right hole. If she said so.
course every poet is falling in love I curse every poet who lost what he loved I curse the sun and the moon for talking in the tides to keep my eyes open all day and all night I keep my eyes open Awesome. Thank you guys for uh, hanging out and paying attention to me um, and being here, honestly. It's really, I've been so discouraged uh, for the last few years with music, so it's, it's really nice to actually be in a room full of people that actually want to listen to music and are excited about it, and um, yeah, thanks. I got some CDs for sale. I got three different, three, I have three of the 15, but uh, yeah, the first seven were complete garbage. The song I wrote is called Razor Blades. Imagine what that sounds like. Radioactive drool. <laughs> yep, I know, right? You just said what? I know, because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even make sense to me. Um, this last song is called uh, The Architect. It's in one director's that for sale tonight. your gig and and and, uh, and whatnot but I can still give you shit <laughs> Than to 
spent another decade living in a war zone, watching friends throwing hand grenades, claiming that they still love. an architect why would he watch why would he watch all his buildings fall and sometimes I wish that it was the only person that's still living so he would Like a hopeless pilot Calling all his angels Praying as the plane goes down And hits the ground It's cause God has got a better place Why would he watch? Why would he watch all his buildings fall? And I see no point at all. God, if you're an architect, why would you watch? Why would you watch all your buildings fall? Sometimes even the bravest soldier feels like jumping off a building because it'd be better. JT Brown will be up in uh, about 10 minutes. You guys stick around. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want records, give me a moment. I'm going to go up to the, the green room and grab some CDs and get whiskey at the bar. So meet me over there. Liquid courage, yo. Thank you, guys.